Kay's going to kick off with some quick fire questions. Off you go. Okay. All right. Are you ready, Grace? The quick fire questions. I can't. <laughs> one word to save my life, but right. Okay. 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 Um, describe yourself in one word. Oh, this is what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we can skip if if. La lazy yeah, workaholic no. is two words. Yeah, that's two words. <laughs> okay. Um, what's your secret talent? I'm really good at Hulu. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, last non-fiction book you read? Non-fiction, non-fiction. I think it might have been Rework. If you Ooh. <laughs> um, your go-to podcast? I might have one that people might be interested in listening to quite soon. Ooh. Excuse um, okay. me. Dead, dead or alive, who would you like to meet and spend a day with? Um, ooh, I'd be very interested to spend a day with probably at the moment Shonda Rhimes. Um, I think her work in the kind of film is incredible, and I'd be very interested to see her kind of creative process and everything. Amazing. And then, last question What are you grateful for? For oh, everything, lots. Um, I have, <laughs> I'd say, particularly. I have been grateful over the past year for great friends um, who make tough times better. Amazing. What is your, does your typical work day, you just described briefly what your day today has been like, but um, what does it look like now? What is that, that, that elusive morning routine look like for you? At the moment, um, it's definitely changed. I think it's evolved over time as I've established what habits are useful for me rather than just basing things off, you know, necessity or what I need to do at the time. I think a lot of the time when I started at university, it would kind of be dependent on how much work I had or whether I was working on the businesses or on my uni work that day. Um, but now for me, it is really, really important to work out in the morning, the majority of the time. Mm. Um, and that's, you know, I try and keep things like scrolling to a minimum so that I am giving myself around half an hour, 45 minutes to myself before anyone else can get in there. And that's really, really important for me, both in creating headspace, keeping myself, you know, feeling mentally and physically fit um, and getting my day. Well, so you, you seem to, both in your book and listening to you now, be so good at this self-analysis. Um, is that something that you're just, you're just, it's always been part of who you are or have you had to learn that? Have you had to say, right, I stand out of yourself look at look at what's going on here grace you reacted in that way you know like what we try and do when when we feel anger rising we're supposed to like walk away oh it's interesting i'm angry mm. at this um is that something you've had to learn or has it come quite naturally to you this is something that i think is really important to develop and beyond just self kind of criticism of being able to have that self-awareness and always kind of attack it and be like oh no but they're probably thinking this that and the other or you know you didn't it's well enough if I'm more and more self-aware and I can more and more understand myself in a objective way rather than being critical then I can improve and can't do that and I can't be honest with myself because you're always going to do things wrong and you're always going to come across the wrong way and you're always going to do the x y and z and just establishing and being able to build on that honesty with yourself is incredibly important and I don't necessarily think I'm there yet you know I don't I don't think it's something that I've necessarily kind of completely hit on the head they'll be critical and there'll be days where I'm I'm sure I think I'm justified in something where I'm where I'm not so um so yeah we can see and hear you and Ziggy is now I mean Ziggy doesn't look that engaged to be honest but um well, I mean he's read the book lots of times so it's actually that's actually why he's he's got to the end of the trouble with it well a good a cheap proofreader so I just wanted to ask you um at the beginning of your journey you know as a solo entrepreneur how you de dealt with imposter syndrome and I suppose comparison culture because I'm a, sing um, I'm a solo entrepreneur at the moment and I find myself second guessing myself a lot to the point that it actually halts productivity because I'm there wondering and worrying about what other people will think about the steps that I'm making with the business. So how would you, what methods do you have to combat that? So I think the most important thing for me has been realising that there are about a hundred thousand ways that you could do every single thing and there are about a hundred thousand decisions you could make at every single second for your business whether you go into this product whether you do this expo to get your product out there whether you send something to this influencer when you can't really afford it whatever it might be there are so many different decisions you can make at any one moment that actually feeling like you're deliberating between two isn't the case and feeling like people are going to be looking at you and saying that oh she should have made this decision 
use your like inner thermostat it like this is what what I kind of thought I got to the point where I was just like you know what there might be judgment because of like I they think I should have done this in this situation all I can do is make my decision that I think is going to be the right decision and then I can learn from it if it was the wrong one and I think that you know I've spoken to a lot of entrepreneurs recently when I've really tried to kind of expand my network and be talking Comes up again and again is people being like I wouldn't do anything differently because the biggest failures taught me the most and I know it's so cliche but it's kind of like actually you can't learn if you don't do things wrong and trust me I mean every everything you see kind of from my businesses now is the sum total of everything that's gone right done again and again and getting rid of everything that's gone wrong so and you know there'll be something tomorrow that goes wrong there's things yesterday that went wrong you, you have to go through it there's no kind of way around it without you know if you also want to learn and so for me, it was about stepping away and being like, there is no right and wrong. There is no one way I could do this. And so the best way I can do it is the way I think that it's the right thing now. In the future, if I learn, I learn. And just making sure you really do learn from those situations is also important. But usually you really do because you're really knocked down a peg, um, which is what I find probably every single day of my life. Um, but, but within the imposter syndrome thing as well, I think, you know, it's tough and there are a number of different reasons and one of the things I read recently was that Harvard Business Review article saying kind of stop telling women they have imposter syndrome start making workplaces better for women and start making workplaces where people can see people like themselves in those workplaces and actually that really like hit me and I was like god do I have imposter syndrome or do I look at what a CEO looks like and think like well <laughs> that doesn't look like me like I don't look that way um and so really analyzing that and analyzing what for me is self-doubt and what is actually you know just something I can push through and just make happen and just stop overthinking it and getting it done um has been very important and I've just kind of spent less time indulging in my own thoughts and just being like I'm just gonna do it if I do it wrong I won't do it next time thank you for that for me was on um some of the other concepts that you mentioned were upper limit problem and then imposter syndrome which we've spoken about I'm interested to know, because we hear so much about imposter syndrome and feeling like you're not good enough, but upper limit problem, I thought it was interesting how you presented that as a bit of a juxtaposition, because that you were saying was like the fear of almost being too successful and, you know, who am I to step into this? So how do you feel like you're affected by both? And then how do you push past them as well? I think it's so interesting because actually, you know, saying like, oh, I'm scared of being successful is never going <laughs> to never going to get you any sympathy. And especially like in yourself and it can't really, get, you know, it, it's, it's not necessarily, I guess, for me, for me about that. For me, it's been realizing actually when I have like a when I feel really uncomfortable at the level I'm at, as I said, you know, when I was finishing university, I honestly, every day I thought I was about to drop dead. I thought I was, I'd be hit by a car. I thought I'd be, you know, cause I was so close to getting to the end of what I saw as like, this has been a vision of success for myself for so long. And that was something I found so interesting. Cause I was like, how is there a name for the fact that we all have this kind of inner thermostat that tries to control our success so that we don't feel out of our comfort zone. And actually then I think when you actually embrace that quality and start to realize like, oh, being out of your comfort zone not only pushes you towards success because it means that you have to like think fast and you need to reevaluate your goals and you need to like really through the hardship to make stuff happen. It's also something whereby you like you're so uncomfortable because of the position you're in and that's something that's great. So for me, sometimes it's just about knowing that these things exist that's so interesting. Like, that's why I feel like that. And and with imposter syndrome, I think both of them, you know, I feel probably not necessarily on a daily basis. So I try not to allow myself to overthink these things as much anymore. It, and I think that one of the reasons I do that is because I know there's a name for them and they exist and it's not just me going absolutely insane. Um, but it's just been for me about kind of thinking, actually just bringing myself away from that and just being like, okay, I could label myself with imposter syndrome, upper limit problem, like all of this. And it could just be like this list of like psychological things that like I, you know, traps I fall into. And instead, I just try and catch myself in the moment and think, OK, we're moving away from that thought. If we're going to be if we if my mind can't behave today and if all my mind's thinking is like, oh, I'm not good enough, then we're just not going to think about myself. <laughs> we're just going to deal with the problem. And that for me has been very important of just being like, you know what? OK, let's move on. You can't, you're overthinking. So let's take yourself and put you in a different position where we can actually have adult conversations because that's like, I kind of have to like mother myself in that way a bit.
listening into all of this grace i'm i'm sort of what i find so fascinating in, in terms of your story is that as the uh, the the poster girl for the announcement culture and yet your your self analysis seems to be so mindful and i think the the big takeout or the big the big lesson that's coming out of the the story your story so far is that to be yourself and embrace being yourself and learn who you are as quickly as you can in life and then go for it the question that i was just we were coming around to was was the context of where we're at today compared to two years ago so the pandemic how is this and grace coming to you first like how is it like this hustle porn sort of culture that that you talk about in the book has the pandemic shifted things around this do you think do you think people are more are better now at balancing or do you think it's going to come surging back i think it's come to a head so i think that it has been exacerbated in terms of the conversation around it so a while ago or you know but i think generally before the pandemic it wouldn't necessarily have been you're kind of left to your own devices with the hustle porn kind of game and now i think within this time it's more been the fact that actually we have to talk about it it's affecting us so much and the idea that we have to be productive all the time we have to be working 24 7 we have to be doing this that and the other and create three businesses whilst also trying to survive a deadly virus is just you know it's got to a point where it's almost we talk about this this is you know this doesn't make any sense so i don't necessarily think that it's kind of died i it's come to a point of analysis, um, which I'm very happy about. Um, and, you know, when I started writing the book over a year ago, um, I, I was kind of thinking, like, would anyone even be interested in talking about this or listening to this? Um, and it's crazy how the conversation has kind of come this way um, over the past year as well. It certainly hasn't just been me and my book at all. Um, and I think that, you know, it's been fantastic to be part of that conversation as well. Actually, it's interesting how you writing about it a year ago, but actually it's leading part of the conversation that's leading the way now. So, so great foresight there. Welcome back, everyone. Um, I'm here with Kay and Grace, and we just wanted to say uh, thank you for doing those sessions. The, the one I was in was so many stories being shared um, in such a short amount of time, really powerful. Um, so, Grace, what did you hear on your walkabout, and um, what were the themes that were coming up that you, and any questions that you, you wanted to share, answer? Oh, well, I have the memory of a sieve, so I won't say the questions I remember because I don't remember anything. But I do remember having some great discussions about particularly comparison, talking about social media in general, talking about managing um, businesses and talking about kind of, yeah, managing your time and making things work for you rather than letting kind of your life and your to-do list and everything walk all over you. Um, so no, I've had some great discussions and it's been fantastic. I, I also sat in a few and listened without appearing um, and it was great to hear. And I'm just so, I'm, I'm really just excited that people are having these conversations. I know they're conversations that people have been having for a long time. Um, and I think that I'm just so pleased to see loads of like-minded people kind of talking about that as well yeah it's great so one that came up a lot in our room and has been was asked earlier how do you know um what your purpose what kind of role you'd be suited to when you haven't had the opportunity to explore those roles yet i think for i think it's different for everyone but i think for me because i don't genuinely think i have a purpose in any way i think that kind of made it easier so i just looked at the things i enjoy in the everyday i talk in, in the book about self-actualizing um and the idea of these micro passions and actually that for me has made it so much easier because it's less about thinking like oh i need to do this this needs to be on my end career goal this needs to be my next job and more instead about like okay, what do I enjoy in the everyday? And is there a job where I can do lots of those things? Or in my existing job, can I bring more of that into it? And I think that one of the things I've seen most actually beyond that has been the amount of people who, you know, we think that you go into a job and then people are worried two years in that if they change their job, they're going to have ruined their career or it's going to, you know, have been a waste of time the past two years. I work with so many people now who I worked with in a completely different capacity um, before. And then I just thought, you know, you're great. <laughs> you can come here. Um, and have done completely different roles and that's just because they've been they've you know been excited and loved parts of the job it hasn't been about the job itself and have been able to really make that happen um just by taking these micro passions and getting really good at them and also taking on more things that they enjoy um kind of surrounding their role 
Great answer. In terms of um, comparison and do I ever struggle with it? I Absolutely. And I think that the, you know, what I talk about a bit in the book is that we're not the first generation to compare. It's not that we're suddenly like the only people who look around and think like, oh, that person's done this and I haven't, or that person looks like this and I haven't. But it's so exacerbated and it's on such a kind of unprecedented, fun word, um, level that I think that actually you know it's it's always going to be the case it's part of our nature clearly and it's just been that it's been hugely exacerbated over the past year so yes absolutely and for for me it's been about actually as as you said kind of putting those boundaries in place and understanding what makes me feel like that usually it's if i spent too much time on social media too much screen time um i've had a bit of a bad day and actually the best thing i can do in that time is put my phone away and spend some time with my friends or read a book or watch some netflix or whatever it might be um and so i think one of the biggest things is about accepting that that's not going to go away and that's such a natural part of life um that is now kind of a hundredfold um, due to the, you know, due to the nature of our social media. Um, and so for me, that's just been kind of quite, quite relieving just to be like, you know what, it's not going to go away. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to keep it at bay when I want to and when I can. When you have uh, sort of spoken or, or helped people or even within your own life who feel really stuck, what has been the helpful tactics to get moving again? Um, I think for me, I know that it's just about, you know, we talked about in the other room I was in, we talked about the idea of kind of the productivity method and that just being something you can fall back on because it's a framework, it's a set of rules, it's something that you can, I'm going to do this. And for me, it's about trying to remove that aspect of, you know, I think within the past year, we've all done a lot of overthinking. We've all done a lot of thinking in general. Um, and for me, it's been about kind of stepping away from a lot of that and sometimes just being like, okay, well, I'm feeling uncomfortable. I'm feeling like perhaps I'm not on the right path. I'm feeling like this, this, and this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to work this work week the best I can work it. And if I still feel the same next week, then I'll revisit that. I think it's really easy to get caught up in kind of your feelings in the moment after a bad day whatever that might be and if you're feeling the same way after a week or two days or whatever it might be then I start to you know really just like write things down and just be like what is my problem what do I think my solution is going to be is that possible and the, even just the thinking around that or I talk to a friend about it or you know whatever it might be and even just the thinking around that really helps me kind of work it out rather than kind of concentrating on these big life changes that I need to put into place and I need to change this trajectory so for me sometimes it's just about being like okay this is hovering in my brain all the time right now but I don't have time to think about it what I'm just going to do is I'm going to systematically work my way through my work this week and then I'm going to you know revisit this next Monday and then maybe I'll block out a time to be thinking like do I need to reset my goals do I need to <laughs> move city whatever it might be uh, trying not to act so quickly to things um, and trying to just be a bit more systematic about it and thinking you know what I can't deal with this now I'm just going to make this work happen and then I can talk think about it at the end of the day or whatever and often by the time you get to that point you're like oh I was being slightly unreasonable and sometimes you're not and then you can work through it then but at least you don't feel kind of irrational yeah I love that it's like the practice of journaling as well it's just getting it back down on paper it really is it really is effective um, so it's a great reminder. Final question to wrap up the session, Grace, and thanks again for your time at the end of this this day. We've got a lot of um, students online tonight, I believe, from the conversations and the questions coming in. And Lucy asks, um, I was wondering if you could go back to your last year of university. I think all those years back. I can't think that far back. You, you probably can, Grace. Specifically, when you were in the process of starting both companies, what advice would you give to yourself then? So if we're at uni now, got some entrepreneurial ideas. What would be your advice that you would give to yourself now that maybe you didn't have then? It depends what time in the year I am, because if I'm at the beginning of my final year, I'm telling myself to not do it <laughs> and to push it back because you will be close to death. Um, however, if I am in that kind of last term where I'm thinking, okay, I'm rebranding one business, I'm launching another and I'm doing my finals, then I, but to be perfectly honest, I do it exactly the same. I was so systematic. I was so clear with my time. I was so clear with my planning. And I think that actually it probably ended up making me do better in my exams and everything because everything was planned out to an, to the kind of second um, because I just needed to make it work. And you know what? In that time, I wasn't acing everything. I did not go to the gym for about six months. I wasn't really seeing friends. I 
you know, like there were all of these different things, but what I was acing in that time, and you know, I say in the book, sometimes you'll be 99% work and that is absolutely fine. Sometimes 99% home and all of that. And that is fine as well. And in that time I was 99% work and I was incredibly systematic about it. And looking back on it, I'm very proud of my, my kind of final year self. However, as I said, if I was being thrown back to my, the kind of beginning of my final year, I'd say, hold off. You don't need to do everything at once sit down, get one thing done first, rather than chasing some shiny new thing. Um, and kind of, yeah, just make it happen. But but I, you know, <laughs> I was proud of how I did it. Um, and I think that's also important to acknowledge because it's good to look back and be like, you are an absolute lunatic. Why on earth did you do that? But also recognizing the strength of any situation as well. And I know I thrive under pressure too. So clearly I like to put myself in that situation. Yeah, and it goes back to knowing the kind of person you are. And the quicker you can do that, the more fun and impact and progress and success you can have. I'll finish on a, a shout out to Amber, someone in my room who said that this book is my new Bible and she's going to be doing the Grace Beverly way of things from now on. So big fan. Of Beverly it. Method. Yeah. <laughs> T TM. Grace, you're such an amazing role model for, for all of us. Um, thank you for leading in all these different ways. Thank you for reading a brilliant book on productivity. There's a lot of average ones out there. This is, this is fun. This, and so much more, so much wisdom in it. And thanks for being with us tonight. Um, and I don't need even to say things like, you know where to find Grace online. Everyone, half the world knows where Grace is online. I need to shout out to Kay at Leafage. Uh, if you want your plants in your life, the greens, Cory and Untapped Digital, if you want social media, strategy, planning, helps us load a Rebel Book Club doing some great things. Um, and Roshan, who's just dropped off, the grocery, natural skincare products, and everyone else tonight has been sharing stuff. And us at Rebel Book Club, there's a special offer for you guys to come and join, sharpen your non-fiction reading habits, and do a lot more of what we've done tonight. Grace, thank you. Cory, Kay, love to hang out. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You've all been fantastic. Thank, thank, thank you so you. much, everyone. Take care. See you later. Bye. Have, Have a good sleep. Have a good rest. Bye.